it was not long before i communicated to his majesty the plan i formed for seizing the enemy's whole fleet the empire of blefuscu is an island parted from lilliput only by a channel eight hundred yards wide i consulted the most experienced seamen on the depth of the channel and they told me that in the middle at high water it was seventy glumguffs about six feet of european measure i walked toward the coast where lying down behind a hillock i took out my spy-glass and viewed the enemy's fleet at anchor about fifty men of war and other vessels i then came back to my house and gave orders for a great quantity of the strongest cables and bars of iron the cable was about as thick as pack-thread and the bars of the length and size of a knitting-needle i troubled the cable to make it stronger and for the same reason twisted three of the iron bars together bending the ends into a hook having thus fixed fifty hooks to as many cables i went back to the coast and taking off my coat shoes and stockings walked into the sea in my leather jacket about half an hour before high water i waded with what haste i could swimming in the middle about thirty yards till i felt ground and thus arrived at the fleet in less than half an hour the enemy was so frightened when they saw me that they leaped out of their ships and swam ashore where there could not be fewer than thirty thousand then fastening a hook to the hole at the prow of each ship i tied all the cords together at the end meanwhile the enemy discharged several thousand arrows many of which stuck in my hands and face my greatest fear was for my eyes which i should have lost if i had not suddenly thought of the pair of spectacles which had escaped the emperor's searchers these i took out and fastened upon my nose and thus armed went on with my work in spite of the arrows many of which struck against the glasses of my spectacles but without any other effect than slightly disturbing them then taking the knot in my hand i began to pull but not a ship would stir for they were too fast held by their anchors thus the boldest part of my enterprise remained letting go the cord i resolutely cut with my knife the cables that fastened the anchors receiving more than two hundred shots in the face and hands then i took up again the knotted end of the cables to which my hooks were tied and with great ease drew fifty of the enemy's largest men of war after me when the blefuscudians saw the fleet moving in order and me pulling at the end they set up a scream of grief and despair that it is impossible to describe when i had got out of danger i stopped a while to pick out the arrows that stuck in my hands and face and rubbed on some of the same ointment that was given me at my arrival i then took off my spectacles and after waiting about an hour till the tide was a little fallen i waded on to the royal port of lilliput the emperor and his whole court stood on the shore awaiting me they saw the ships move forward in a large half-moon but could not discern me who in the middle of the channel was under water up to my neck the emperor concluded that i was drowned and that the enemy's fleet was approaching in a hostile manner but he was soon set at ease for the channel growing shallower every step i made i came in a short time within hearing and holding up the end of the cable by which the fleet was fastened i cried in a loud voice long live the most puissant emperor of lilliput the prince received me at my landing with all possible joy and made me a nardle on the spot which is the highest title of honour among them his majesty desired that i would take some opportunity to bring all the rest of his enemy's ships into his ports and seemed to think of nothing less than conquering the whole empire of blefuscu and becoming the sole monarch of the world but i plainly protested that i would never be the means of bringing a free and brave people into slavery and though the wisest of the ministers were of my opinion my open refusal was so opposed to his majesty's ambition that he would never forgive me and from this time a plot began between himself and those of his ministers who were my enemies that nearly ended in my utter destruction about three weeks after this exploit there arrived an embassy from blefuscu with humble offers of peace which was soon concluded on terms very advantageous to our emperor there were six ambassadors with a train of about five hundred persons all very magnificent having been privately told that i had befriended them 
they made me a visit and paying me many compliments on my valour and generosity invited me to their kingdom in the emperor their master's name i asked them to present my most humble respects to the emperor their master whose royal person i resolved to attend before i returned to my own country accordingly the next time i had the honour to see our emperor i desired his general permission to visit the blefuscudian monarch this he granted me but in a very cold manner of which i afterward learned the reason when i was just preparing to pay my respects to the emperor of blefuscu a distinguished person at court to whom i had once done a great service came to my house very privately at night and without sending his name desired admission i put his lordship into my coat pocket and giving orders to a trusty servant to admit no one i fastened the door placed my visitor on the table and sat down by it his lordship's face was full of trouble and he asked me to hear him with patience in a matter that highly concerned my honour and my life you are aware he said that skyresh bolgolam has been your mortal enemy ever since your arrival and his hatred is increased since your great success against blefuscu by which his glory as admiral is obscured this lord and others have accused you of treason and several councils have been called in the most private manner on your account out of gratitude for your favours i procured information of the whole proceedings venturing my head for your service and this was the charge against you first that you having brought the imperial fleet of blefuscu into the royal port were commanded by his majesty to seize all the other ships and put to death all the bigendian exiles and also all the people of the empire who would not immediately consent to break their eggs at the smaller end and that like a false traitor to his most serene majesty you excused yourself from the service on pretence of unwillingness to force the consciences and destroy the liberties and lives of an innocent people again when ambassadors arrived from the court of blefuscu like a false traitor you aided and entertained them though you knew them to be servants of a prince lately in open war against his imperial majesty moreover you are now preparing contrary to the duty of a faithful subject to voyage to the court of blefuscu in the debate on this charge my friend continued his majesty often urged the services you have done him while the admiral and treasurer insisted that you should be put to a shameful death but reldrizzle secretary for private affairs who has always proved himself your friend suggested that if his majesty would please to spare your life and only give orders to put out both your eyes justice might in some measure be satisfied at this bolgolum rose up in fury wondering how the secretary dared to desire to preserve the life of a traitor and the treasurer pointing out the expense of keeping you also urged your death but his majesty was graciously pleased to say that since the council thought the loss of your eyes too easy a punishment some other might afterward be inflicted and the secretary humbly desiring to be heard again said that as to expense your allowance might be gradually lessened so that for want of sufficient food you should grow weak and faint and die in a few months when his majesty's subjects might cut your flesh from your bones and bury it leaving the skeleton for the admiration of posterity thus through the great friendship of the secretary the affair was arranged it was commanded that the plan of starving you by degrees should be kept a secret but the sentence of putting out your eyes was entered on the books in three days your friend the secretary will come to your house and read the accusation before you and point out the great mercy of his majesty that only condones you to the loss of your eyes which he does not doubt you will submit to humbly and gratefully twenty of his majesty's surgeons will attend to see the operation well performed by discharging very sharp pointed arrows into the balls of your eyes as you lie on the ground i leave you said my friend to consider what measures you will take and to escape suspicion i must immediately return as secretly as i came his lordship did so and i remained alone in great perplexity at first i was bent on resistance for while i had liberty i could easily with stones pelt the metropolis to pieces but i soon rejected that idea with horror remembering the oath i had made to the emperor and the favours i had received from him at last having his majesty's leave to pay my respects to the emperor of blefuscu i resolved to take this opportunity 
before the three days had passed i wrote a letter to my friend the secretary telling him of my resolution and without waiting for an answer went to the coast and entering the channel between wading and swimming reached the port of blefuscu where the people who had long expected me led me to the capital his majesty with the royal family and great officers of the court came out to receive me and they entertained me in a manner suited to the generosity of so great a prince i did not however mention my disgrace with the emperor of lilliput since i did not suppose that prince would disclose the secret while i was out of his power but in this it soon appeared i was deceived 